eat at five. Uh, and yoga practice is both on Tuesday and Thursday mornings now. Uh, so uh, come if you need to stretch and exercise. And this Wednesday, we'll be having a full breakfast with United Methodist Men and a good speaker. So come have breakfast with us. Uh, and I can promise you grits that have world peace involved in them. So if you come have them, they would. if we could have a sit down with the world with those, it would fix it. Um, women's Bible study is continuing on Thursday, uh, and we have some upcoming planning meetings that are going on as well. Uh, well, we are ready for the light of Christ. If you would, please send in the light. Stand with me this morning for our call to worship. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord your glory and the sin. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of thunders. The voice of the Lord is powerful, and the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon and makes Lebanon skip like a calf. The Lord sits in front of the kings forever, and the Lord gives strength to his people. Good morning. Good morning. Let's sing together, Holy, 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 page 54.
So the children's sermon will be on the screen today. That's why we're having a discussion. So they can watch from their seats where they are. I think we want to sing Jesus loves me. Oh, there it is. Go ahead. Good morning. I'm glad to see everybody here this morning. It's sure is a wonderful day. I want to start out by saying good morning on the count of three. One, two, three. And I'm so glad that you're here and you're listening this morning. Before I start talking about the Bible story, first of all, I want to show you this. It's the American flag. You all have some of these. You know there's a special holiday coming tomorrow. It's Memorial Day. And you all know what Memorial Day is. It's that special holiday that we celebrate in this country to remember the men and women that have given their lives in service of this country. And it's been a holiday for over 150 years. The people that died in order we might be able to, to have the freedoms that we have, like coming to church, saying our prayers, and going to school, and going to work, and all the things that we get to enjoy, all those freedoms, a lot of people had to give a lot in order for us to have those freedoms. In fact, I guess you could say that freedom isn't really free. Somebody has to sacrifice a lot for our freedoms. And that's what reminds me most of our Bible story today. In our Bible today, we're talking about Jesus who knows everything about sacrifice. He gave his very life so our sins might be forgiven and we can live forever in heaven. And our Bible story today is about that. It starts out with a man named Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus was quite a guy. He thought he was really smart, and a lot of people thought he was really smart, too. He was a Pharisee, a religious leader, and he knew all about the law. People would come to him and ask all kinds of questions about God and the law. But he didn't have all the answers. There was something or someone he was seeking, and that person he was seeking was Jesus Christ. He heard that Jesus was staying close to where he lived, and so at night, he got up and traveled across town to meet Jesus and to talk to him and to ask him some questions. Now, why did he go at night? Well, it's kind of thought that maybe he went at night because he didn't want all the other religious leaders to see him going during the day because everybody thought he knew all the answers, and he was seeking somebody that really did know. So even at night, Jesus was there to receive him and answer all his questions. Because when we honestly seek Jesus, Jesus is always there. So Nicodemus talks to Jesus. And let me tell you what the Bible says that Jesus says and Nicodemus says. Not Bonnie's words, but the Holy Bible's words. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus. He was one of the Jewish rulers. He came to Jesus at night and said, Jesus we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. We know that God is with you. If he wasn't with you, you couldn't do the signs and the miracles that you were doing. Jesus said, what I'm about to tell you is very true. No one can see God's kingdom unless they are born again. Uh, and Nicodemus said, how can someone be born again? They can't be born a second time. They can't become a baby again, can they? Jesus answered, what I'm about to tell you is very, very true. No one can enter God's kingdom unless they are born with water and the Holy Spirit. People give birth to people, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised when I say, you must all be born again. Well, when Nicodemus heard that, he didn't really understand what it meant to be born again, and sometimes it's kind of hard for even us to understand. That's why I love this little book that's called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Now, you all know this book. This is one of my grandson August's favorite books, and it talks about a fuzzy little caterpillar that's born one Sunday, and he's seeking out a new life because the life he has as a caterpillar isn't the one he was meant to have. So he takes a long trip, and he eats a lot of stuff until he kind of becomes sick of his tummy. And the time comes that he becomes attached to a branch and he builds a cocoon around himself. And in about two weeks on another Sunday, he starts digging himself out of the cocoon. And he's not a caterpillar anymore. He's a butterfly. He's the same creature, but he has a new life. A new life that he was meant to.
meant to have. Wasn't meant to stay a caterpillar. He was meant to be a butterfly. He was meant to be free. And I love that story because that story tells me what maybe Jesus was saying to Nicodemus. We may be the same creature, but we were born to love Jesus. We were born to have a new life. We were born to be free in Jesus Christ. What a good story that is and what a good truth that is because that's what Jesus was telling Nicodemus and that's what he's telling us. Now, here's the rest of the story about Nicodemus. We don't really know what happens right after that story, but we do know that Nicodemus is going to appear again in the Bible as a believer of Jesus when he defends Jesus before his crucifixion and then after his crucifixion, he comes to when Jesus is buried. So Jesus really spoke to Nicodemus and Nicodemus heard the message. Nicodemus came to be a believer and that's what Jesus wants from you. He wants you to make the choice. Now the caterpillar couldn't make a choice, but you can. God made the choice for the caterpillar. That's what nature does, but you make the choice for you. You make the choice to come to love Jesus and to receive him by faith in your heart and then you will live forever with him. It's your choice. God is always talking to you and always asking you and hoping that you'll say yes. This year was fun. Let's bow our heads and say a prayer. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for these beautiful children that are here this morning that are listening. And I thank you for the story of Nicodemus. I thank you, God, that he was seeking you. And because he was seeking you, he found you. And I thank you for even the little story of the fuzzy little caterpillar. I thank you, God, that the fuzzy little caterpillar found a new life, a new life, a free life, the same creature with a new life. May we be hungry enough to seek you to at whatever age we are. And when we find you or you find us, may we live that beautiful life here and then one day meet you face to face in heaven. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand together and sing our hymn of promise this morning, Here I Am, Lord, 593.
remain standing, we have the opportunity as God's people to affirm our faith. And I ask you, church, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 We'll continue in this time of prayer. There are prayer requests in your bulletin. There's also green cards there, uh, and some of them are in your uh, pew pads. If you'd fill those out as well. And when the plates come around, uh, we'll gather up the prayer requests. And we do pray over those every Sunday. Let us have a time of silent prayer together. Most gracious heavenly God, we come together today in praise and worship of you, for you are worthy. And as we come this day, dear Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to guide and teach us into all truth, bringing us to your throne of grace so that we may not remain unchanged, but we may become into likeness after likeness of Christ. Dear Lord, may your Holy Spirit be in me this day as I bring your message. We come this day with prayer concerns upon our hearts and upon our minds for those who've lost loved ones and who are mourning. 
May your spirit be closer than their own hands and feet. And may we each know the peace that surpasses all understanding. We come this day with friends and loved ones who are suffering from illness. And dear Lord, we boldly ask for healing. And during this time as well, Lord, with persons who are sick, may we see your Holy Spirit, that relationships are made anew, that not only bodies being, being healed, but our minds and our souls. Dear Lord, we come this day with brokenness in our world, within our community, within our nation, within the world. And dear Lord, we look for your kingdom. May we each be called and participate in the coming of your kingdom here on this earth. For you love the world so much that you came and lived among us, lived and died for our sake, and rose on the third day. And today we pray in the way that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll continue our worship, the giving of tithes and offerings as the ushers come forward. Let us pray. Most gracious heavenly God, we come this day a people whom you have blessed. And now we return to you a portion for your kingdom. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in the prayer of illumination, and it will be followed by the scripture reading this morning. 
Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, and then John 3, 1 through 17. In the year of King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe was filled, filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorpost and threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Our second scripture out of John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born again if they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless they are born of water and the Spirit. The flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. Then how will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most gracious heavenly God, may the meditations of my mind and the words of my mouth be holy and pleasing unto you. Amen. Some of my favorite passages of scripture this morning came up in the lectionary. From Isaiah, the year King Uzziah died. What an interesting way to start a passage. The year King Uzziah died. You know, I would put a date. But apparently there was something very important about the year that King Uzziah died. There, there's a reason our author starts with that phraseology. King Uzziah had been king for 52 years. 
over some of the most prosperous times for Israel. Israel had expanded. They had won many wars, many battles. The economy was going well. Arts and food were plentiful. Things were going great. And then he dies. His son was to take over, who was, I believe, 24 to 25 years old. And there were clouds of war on the horizon with people who were ready to get rid of Israel. Can you see why he said the year that the King Uzziah died? He's pointing to us something that he is a bit nervous and jittery about what's going to take place. You ever been in that place where you're uncertain about your future? You wonder how it's all going to go? Uh, you, you think maybe the economy might not do well? You think things might not go well? If you live long enough, you will have those years. If you live long enough, you'll have both prosperity and it, it, both will happen, and probably more than once. So what happens? Isaiah's nervous. And then something amazing happens. He has a vision. He has an amazing vision. This is just unearthly. He is ushered in and is able to see God in his throne room, which is uh, the temple. Now, you have to picture the temple for a moment. Uh, the front of it, where the doors are hung, are larger than our glass walls out front. So picture doors that are three stories tall and weigh several tons. And they are shaking on their hinge pins from the volume of the seraphim singing. Can you picture that for a moment? Yeah, something that large, several, you know, 20 feet wide, 33 stories tall, and the, and the threshold is shaking. There is smoke coming out, and the hem of his garment comes all the way down. Do you think this is a terrifying sight? I'm going to go with, yeah. There's in that moment, you were worried about this. Wait till you see the very power of God. And, and the volume's not coming from God. Who's it coming from? The seraphim's worship. And, and in that moment, what does he think? I am undone. I'm in a world of trouble. Creator of the universe, and here I stand. I'm a man of unclean lips, uh, and I come from a group of people with unclean lips. And, and, and then the seraphim take a coal, they place it upon his lips, and he is cleansed, and then he is called. You, you see, I, I think there comes a time in our life when we need a new birth, when, when we need a change. And, and I think it often happens, and it, it comes to our attention, whenever we placed our faith in people or things or systems, and we find that our faith is misplaced. Anybody ever put your faith in the wrong stuff? Yeah. Isaiah has placed his faith in, in the wrong king. And now he's ushered into the real kings. And, and, and as he stands there, what does he come? I'm sure fear. And then his fear turns to courage. And then there's cleansing, and then there's calling. God has moved him from one place to another. You, you see, I think when we realize that God is still seated on his throne, no matter what has happened, we are born of a new spirit. We, we can handle difficult, we can handle tragedy, we can handle the loss if we know that God is still seated on his throne. What a wonderful lesson from Isaiah. He, he, here is a new breath of life from him, from worried to sent out into the world. He's gone from afraid to courage, to cleansed, to called. It, it's interesting that it's put up against this, the passage in John where it's called that we must be born again. Now, now Nicodemus, I always like to shorten his name to Nick when I'm writing my sermon notes. Nick, because I can remember, doesn't he seem a lot more close to us that way? But anyway, I'll go ahead and call him Nicodemus this morning. Our friend Nicodemus, 
who is probably the best educated man in Jerusalem. He, he's at the top of the ladder. Everything is going well. And what does he do? He goes to talk to Jesus at night. Now, I pick up on that is, as Miss Bonnie said, he didn't want to be noticed by all of his buddies. Anybody ever not want your friends to know what you're doing? Because you're worried what they might think of you? Y'all probably don't have these issues. I think it's also that John's pointing to maybe a darkness of his spirit. Maybe he's in darkness spiritually. Maybe he knows that he doesn't know enough. And he's gone to Jesus. And what's really great, he goes to Jesus and he starts out by buttering Jesus up a little bit, right? Hey, we know that you, right, come from God because of all the signs and miracles you do. We know that you're a great one. And then I'm expecting a question from Nicodemus, but he doesn't get to his question. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Nicodemus doesn't get to a question before he even gets to say anything else. What does Jesus say? Nicodemus, you need to be born again. It's like, but you, I don't know about you, but I'm like, well, what was his question? Jesus didn't need the question. He had the answer. He said, the reason you're hung up, you're high centered. The reason you're not getting anywhere with all this is what you need to be born anew. You need to be born of the spirit of God. Nicodemus is even, he's like, well, that's not helpful, Jesus. I'm not still getting it. And Jesus then goes into a play on words. You need to be born of the water and the spirit. And the word spirit is also the word we use for Holy Spirit. It's also breath. It's also wind. All of those are kind of together. And he says, do you not know the wind blows where the wind blows? This, God's spirit does what God's spirit does. And you can tell by it's doing what it's doing. The spirit you need to be born of is the spirit that hovered over the waters, the spirit that is all the way back to creation. For the spirit of God hovered over the waters and then something happened. Nicodemus needed a change. He needed an inward change and he's not going to be able to see the kingdom of God till the kingdom of God is brought to within him. He, he can't see it. And Jesus invites him, you must be born again. So I see a similar problem between Isaiah and Nicodemus. They both have their faith in the wrong stuff. They both have their faith in the wrong places. I, I think we can get stuck in that same place as well. We're not willing to move to what God is doing because we have our faith in something that's already going on. I'm, I'm okay, just leave me alone. I think this will work out because my faith is in King Uzziah. Well, what happens? King Uzziah dies. For Nicodemus, what's his faith placed in? Tradition? His position? I don't know. But something... I mean, he, he knows he's got a clue. Jesus, you're of God. We, we know something's going on here. And Jesus invites him, you need to let go. You need to die to something so you can be born to something. <clears throat> Miss Bonnie brought a great book forward. Um, the Hungry, it's Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar. Thank you. <laughs> it's so great, I don't know the title. Y'all may not know this, the author, when he wrote it, wasn't a Christian. Uh, he passed away this past week. Uh, he was surprised by the success of the book, and the success of the book has taken off many because uh, many churches and many Christians have taken a much deeper meaning than he thought was in the book. He thought it was a fun book about a caterpillar that ate a lot and then became a butterfly. But there's, there's a truth in it, right? That the caterpillar was growing... But before the caterpillar could become a butterfly, he had to die to being a caterpillar. There's that truth in all of us, right? Before we can born again, there's probably something we got to die to. And that's the hang-up, isn't it? That's the hang-up to new life in Christ. The hang-up to following Jesus is letting go and grabbing hold. And I think so often we don't want to let go 
because we're so used to this. We're so comfortable. But God, don't you notice how well I've decorated this mess of my life? I know it's a dumpster fire, but it's a warm dumpster fire. And Jesus says to him, you got to be born again. You got to let go to take hold. Now, I'm at a part in my sermon that I certainly don't remember. Oh, yeah, great. So why faith in God? Well, we just finished up confirmation, and, you know, one of the interesting parts of it was they were talking about the nature and character of God, and why is God trustworthy? Actually, a really good question. I don't know if you thought about it very deeply, but they kind of divided the attributes of God, which they have these really large words around, into, into three parts. And, and they divided them up into, like, superheroes. This, this is so that, you know, teenagers can understand, which means that y'all should be able to get it. Look, y'all tell me you like Bonnie's sermons, <laughs> and I know why. So uh, the, the three different characters have to do with, you know, if God is ultimately powerful, if you had a superhero that was just all powerful, but that's all he was, was all power. And then you had another one that was all knowing, which is genius guy. And, and then you, you had the third one, which was moral guy. Yet the three of them don't really hang out together, don't really know each other real well, but each of them have each of these attributes. If you had a real problem that needed solving, which one would you go to? Now, you could go to moral guy, and you know that the moral guy would want to do the right thing, but he might not have the power. And he might not have the smarts to know how to get it done. But the genius guy, you guys have watched plenty of evil genius movies, right? To know what the problem with going to genius guy is. Genius guy might make things worse. And all strength guy... He may have the power to do what needs doing, but do you see the problem is, is he might just break whatever you need fixed. But in God, we have all three. Fully powerful, fully good, and fully knowing. It, it, it is in that God that we place our trust and fully loving. He came in person walked among us and said, what do you need? You need to let go and you need to let me. You need to be born anew. Now this doctrine of new birth is a doctrine within the Methodist church. I don't know if you knew it or not, but John Wesley spoke that we all need a new birth. And in one of his sermons, he talks about without new birth, there is no Christian walk. We must be born again to know salvation. And to know salvation is then to what? Know a new life. There is justification and sanctification. And the moment of justification is this. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are born anew. We are set on the path and we are made fully righteous before God, and we are on our way to heaven. That is a new birth in Christ. And then the rest of our life is sanctification. We are justified, and then we spend our life being made into the likeness of Christ by his grace and mercy. But we can't see the sanctification till we have the justification. We can't see the kingdom of God till we step into the kingdom that he has in our hearts. To, to land on the same story that Miss Bonnie did, which I think is really kind of critical, is our friend Nicodemus. What was the outcome of that meeting? I think we know. For he became a follower of Christ. He gathered his body from the cross and put it in the grave. Nicodemus found what he was looking for. Even though he didn't know the question. 
My prayer for you and for each of us is may we know a new life that is in Christ and may we let go of all things that are not worthy of our faith. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Ah, our hymn of invitation today, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Great hymn, isn't it? The kingdom of God coming here on earth by people who have known the resurrected Christ. That's the meaning of this song. I invite you, if you're looking for a group of people to travel along with to join, come meet me here at the altar rail. Or if you need to spend some time in prayer about what you need to let go of, this altar rail is open for you this morning. Stand and sing. I send you forth into a world that tomorrow is celebration of Memorial Day. Celebration. May we celebrate the sacrifice that set us free and made us holy. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.